Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning, yes, good morning. Sir. We welcome you in the Lord's house this morning. One yes, we ask sir. that you help us lift yes, up the name sir. of the Lord through song, prayer, yeah. and scripture. And give his name the praise and honor yeah. and the glory that is worthy to be praised. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. We're just here trying to just send up some praise to him. Eat. That's it. No. He says, when one or two gather, the Lord and the Holy Spirit is in the presence. Amen. Amen. So we welcome him in his house. We know that he's here. But we ask you to help us lift up his name this morning. Yes. yes. I woke uh, up this morning with, with my uh, mind. My mind was stayed on Jesus. All I woke up this morning with my mind. My mind was stayed on Glory, Jesus. hallelujah. I woke up this morning with my mind. My mind was Lord stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm jumping and shouting with my mind. My mind and heart stayed on Jesus. And I tell you that I'm jumping and shouting with my mind. My mind and heart stayed on Glory, hallelujah. Said I'm jumping and shouting with my mind. My mind and heart stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I'm singing and praying with my mind. My mind and all stayed on Jesus. And I'm singing and praying with my mind. My mind all stayed. Oh, on glory, hallelujah, I'm singing, singing and praying with my mind, my mind, oh, stay on oh, Jesus, a hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, up this morning with my mind, my mind was stayed on Jesus. I tell him that I woke up this morning with my mind, my mind was stayed on Jesus. Said I woke up this morning with my mind. My mind all stayed on Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Now we have scripture. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank you, Father. Are we reading Psalms 100? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Yeah. Serve the Lord in gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Yeah. Know ye the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, not we ourselves. No. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Yeah. Into his gates with thanksgiving, yeah. and into his courts with praise. Yeah. Be thankful yeah. unto him and bless his name. For, For the Lord, Lord is good, is his mercy everlasting. His truth. His truth endures to all generations. So is God's word. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, sir. Will trust mm -hmm. in, in the Lord. I will trust. Eternal Father, the one who sits high and the one who looks low, the one who has all power. Father God, we come before you this morning as humble as we know how, with joy in our hearts, Father God. Thanking you for allowing us to see a day that we'll never see again, Father God. Because you found favor and you touched us with a finger of love and allowed us to get up with a reasonable portion of our health and strength this morning, Father God. And we stop to say we thank you this morning, Father God. 
And then we ask you, Father God, oh, to forgive yeah. us of all our many sins, oh, seen yeah. and unseen. And then we thank you for forgiving us, Father God. Because, Father God, you didn't have to, but you did, Father God. And we stop this morning to say we thank you. Just for that, Father God alone, we can stop and praise you, Father God. Because some of us have faults and some of us has flaws and failures. But, Father God, thanks be to God and thanks for your son, Jesus, Father God. We stop this morning and we come into your house knowing that Jesus is in here, Father God. Knowing that you're in your house. We ask you to pour out your spirit, Father God. And help us this morning lift up your name, Father God. We need you right now through song, Father God. Through prayer, Father God. And through scripture, Father God. We need you to speak through us, speak to us, Father God. And then use us, Father God, for your service, Father God. We ask you to bless our pastor, Father God. Keep him in a mighty way. Touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, Father God. And then bless his wife, Father God. Bless his children, Father God. Keep them, Father God. Bless all the officers right now, Father God. The ones that are here, Father God. The ones that are waiting for vacation reasons. Or the ones that couldn't be here for whatever strict reason, Father God. Bless them right now, Father God. Wrap your loving arms around Deacon Wilson, Father God. Keep them right now, Father God. Keep Deacon Moore. Keep Deacon Jordan, Father God. Bless all the ministers at this church, Father God. Keep them in a mighty way. Bless their wives, Father God. Bless the mothers. Bless the children of this church, Father God. Bless every auxiliary and every ministry under the Friendship Baptist Church, Father God. You've been keeping us, Father God, and it's been nobody but you. And we stopped this morning to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, Father God. It was nobody but you, Father God, that found a way to, to get, give us, Father God, and keep us engaged in the Sunday school hour, Father God. It was nobody but you that gave the pastor the vision, Father God. And we stopped to say this morning, we thank you, Father God. We ask you to bless all the sick and afflicted, Father God. Bless the bereaved family right now, Father God. Bless the Johnson and the Taylor family, Father God. Father God, and bless the newlyweds, Father God, the union that happen here Father God keep them right now Father God bless them right now Father God the only way you can Father God Father God bless us all this morning bless the teachers Father God bless all the students Father God and then Father God we ask ask that your word Father God Father God pour, pour, Prick, your, prick our hearts with your word, Father God. And then, Father God, let us be joyful of telling somebody about the good news of yes, you, Father God. Father God, it was nobody but your son Jesus that gave us this opportunity this morning. So we stop to say we thank you for your son. We thank you for Calvary. We thank you for the resurrection, Father God. And then we thank you for your Holy Spirit that dwells, Father God, in the mist when you're gone, Father God, for the physical presence, Father God. We love you and we thank you, Father God. We lift up your name right now this morning, Father God. Father God, in Jesus' name, we pray and ask in all these things. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on. Give God a hand of praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We ask that you give a warm welcome of praise as our pastor comes to give a brief introduction before our morning matter. Amen. To God be the glory for the things he has done. I can honestly say he has done great things for us we all can say hallelujah and thank you lord for saving us to you that are on to our officers i should say and our ministers mothers and to each of you our sunday school superintendent assistant sunday su superintendent all of the teachers and to each of you my father's children welcome one and all what a better day what a, what, what day can be made better than to study the word of God. Amen. Read and invest time in just letting God feed you through this morning manner. And I want to thank God for all of our teachers that have served through this pandemic, all of our, every Sunday, whether it was children department, youth department, young adult, or the seniors, thank you for enduring talking to a camera for an entire year and almost a half now. I thank you for suffering through this pandemic with us. And we certainly want to thank all of you that are online on Facebook, conference call. We thank you for uh, just allowing us to present a lesson to you uh, via media. It's strange, but it is what it is. And I just thank you for affording us the opportunity to share God's word Amen. and just inspire your spirit and inspire your heart and prayerfully brighten your day and give you a greater insight on what tomorrow can hold for you. Thank you so much. And as we come today, our children again are meeting. Our youth are meeting at 10 o'clock. Their call numbers are on the screen. The young adults are meeting 
at uh, 10 o'clock for Sunday school. Please wake your children, your youth, and your young adult up. Allow them to be blessed by the word of God as the teachers come share the truth of God. Our senior class will be held today by Deacon Mark Kirkland, and we invite you to share this link with someone that they will be ministered to. And don't hang up on us. Stay with us throughout the worship day. At 1045, we're going to begin our morning worship. And we ask you to just be blessed by being a part of that experience. You don't know what God can do for you until you invest time and surrender to him. Let this be the Lord's day. Let this be the Lord's day in your life. And watch God begin to bless you. Day by day. Oh, a closer walk with the Lord is what we all need. It's what we all desire. You can't do that by ignoring God. And so I just ask you, invest this day in serving, learning, and worshiping the Lord our God. Will you do that for me today? Well, God bless you and may God keep you. Give our teacher, Deacon Kirkland, a hand as he comes. Our assistant Sunday school teacher. Come on, Dave. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good, morning. good to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God, Amen. to the pastor, the great pastor of this church, to all the ministers, to the officers, to each of you, my brothers and sisters, to Sister Dunham, uh, Mama. It's good to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. Amen. 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 On the top side of the soil. Amen. 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 This morning, scripture is coming from Matthew 14, uh, 22 through 33. Um, the topic of the lesson is an amazing feat. Am I right? Yes. Amazing feat with a subtitle of Why Do You Doubt? With a subtitle of Why Do You Doubt? Yes. There's a lot of subtitles you could take out of this lesson. Like keep your eye on Jesus, amen. amen. Um, or don't uh, keep or keep your faith in the Lord, right? There's a lot of subtitles that we could take from this lesson this evening. I mean, this morning. So I ask that you go with me to the, the 14th chapter of Matthew. During this time, it is the time uh, 26 years after the death of uh, uh, of Christ, the place, the Sea of Galilee, um, and we know our our golden text scripture is coming from the 31st verse of this. Uh, scripture and it reads and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him O thou of little faith wherefore didst thou doubt that's the golden text scripture this morning um, this morning we have a, a good question has any of us ever been in a crisis uh, in uh, a, 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 a in depth of crisis a crisis uh, people often are caught between trust and doubt right amen in the midst of a crisis, sometimes you, uh, you're wagering your, your, your trust and your doubt. And sometimes you're doubtful in some things, right? Amen. You've been there before because you are a flesh, amen? And we are human, right? So we do doubt, have some doubt creep in sometimes, amen? And so wh who do we trust in the time of doubt? Uh, will one trust that Jesus will help us? Um, by, Jesus, by walking on water to save his disciples, demonstrated his divine empowerment to be the savior of all. all right. Amen. Have you ever been in a situation where you experienced a crisis? Now, you, you may not have been the one in the crisis, but you probably helped somebody that was in a what? Crisis. And then after you were able to draw upon in needed insight or resources to cope with your crisis, or you helped somebody cope with this crisis, where you led to help assist someone in their own crisis. Um, we see this morning in today's lesson, the synoptic uh, scholars refer to this time in Jesus's ministry as the Galilean crisis. This was the beginning of signs the Jewish religious establishment would begin to turn on Jesus. After he refused to be the king, they perceived he could have, he could have been. He fed them bread in the wilderness, amen, and then they wanted to use him to continue the food supply in the desert. But they didn't see him as the Messiah, or as John's gospel put it, the bread of life. 
From Matthew's point of view here, we see this morning the final verses of the previous miracle in the wilderness. Jesus dealt with his internal, this internally through prayer to his father. Amen. Then he discovered the disciples were in their own crisis and that Jesus would have to deal with them and save them from their own crisis. Has Jesus saved you from your own crisis? Come on, give him a hand of praise this morning. Come on, come on, come on. Give God a hand of praise. Has he saved you in your own crisis? If you put yourself in your own crisis sometimes, amen? Amen. So let's get into this morning's scripture, amen? And we'll read uh, Matthew 14 and 22 if you want to read it together with me. Or you can just read it to yourself however you want to, but just read along, amen? And it reads, the 14th, I mean the 22nd verse reads, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship, and go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. Straightway, he what? Constrained his disciples. Let's stop right there and just look at this verse. Let's look at the command. Amen? There was a command that happened right there. When, he, when you see that he constrained, meaning he what? He moved them. He, he, he kind of, he, he pressed on them. He moved them. He forced them in to get into the boat. Amen? So that constraint meaning he didn't he he had to get them to out of out of the crowd to get them to get, to understand who Jesus really is because we're gonna see it right and so this morning we see he made a command there the command by Jesus for the disciples to get into the boat and go before him to the other side of the lake was pre presupposed the, the fact that an unusual circumstance had already existed the result of the previous miracle here. The feeding of the 5,000 was what some have described as a swelling tide of enthusiasm rising to its full height and thus moved the multitude to form a foolish and dangerous plan. The plan this crowd wanted to crown Jesus and make him their king. They were on the verge of coming and taking Jesus by force in order to do so. Right? Jesus wanted to remove both himself and his disciples from the foolish enthusiasm of the crowd. Y'all ever been in a, a raucous crowd before? I'm sure at a basketball game or an event, and they just got kind of out of hand, and you kind of had to what? Remove yourself. Amen? Because you know who what? You are. Amen? You're a child of what? God. Right? You have to remove yourself. Amen? Jesus here wanted to remove himself and the disciples from the enthusiasm of the crowd. Now, was the crowd wrong trying to crown him king at that time? Yeah. But he was the king. They just didn't want to anoint him as the Messiah and the son of God. Amen? All right? Now watch this. For that reason, he arranged for them to sail away at dusk across the sea while he dispersed the crowd. Because Jesus got the disciples out of the political atmosphere of the revolutionary excitement that was going on. You understand? There was excitement. Jesus was in the midst of them. A lot of people. This is 5,000 people. He didn't fed. This is the biggest what? Fish fry that we know of man. To this day, I, I've yet to, even at a family reunion, I've yet to see 5,000 being fed by some a, a low. A, I've yet. Amen? Right? So we see how the last miracle affected this, the next, this next miracle. Amen? Okay. The result of the miracle in the wilderness did not take Jesus by surprise. It didn't, y'all. It was what he expected. Or perhaps, in a sense, it's what he wanted to happen. Amen? 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 It was time for that the thoughts of many hearts to be revealed. That's what it was time for. It was time for what? The trust and faith in who? Jesus. That's when your heart is going to be really revealed right there. Who do you have faith in? Jesus. Say it again, Sister Williams. Jesus. Who do you have trust in? Jesus. This is a case of being many hearts to be revealed. Who is going to put their trust and faith in who? Jesus. Right? Amen? That's what, and it was time for them to do that. And at, and at least one of the reasons the miracle was performed was to help reveal the people's hearts. You understand? It was help to reveal their hearts. That miracle of the 5,000 being fed? It was to help. Is he really the one? Is it, in their heart, 
So in your heart, do you believe that he's really the one? Because he does reveal things to you, amen? He has revealed things to you, amen? You're a child of God, right? He may not, he may not tell you right then and there, but he does reveal it to you. Want to know why he reveals it to you on his time? Because at that point in time you ask for it, you ain't ready for it. Amen? I, I, Sometimes we, we go to Jesus in prayer and we ask him, Lord, uh, uh, show me, get, let, let, show me a sign. Now, 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 look, check it out. He ain't going to show you no sign. I don't know why we go, go down in prayer. Lord, bless me. Have mercy on me. Help me. Don't show me no sign. Because <laughs> if I need a sign, I'm going to go the other way. But I need some help. And this, the, 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 the act of this, this feeding of the 5,000 of the wilderness was to reveal people's hearts and who they trusted in. Amen. Who do you trust in in a time of a crisis? Jesus. Who do you put your trust in? Who, who do you put your trust in when you're in trouble? Jesus. When you when, when you're in a, when you're in an uncomfortable situation, who do you put your trust in? Jesus. So why do we doubt? Him? Yeah, we shouldn't doubt him if we put our trust in him. Amen. We should have what full trust and faith that he's gonna come through like he says he's gonna do every time. Amen. Right? The, the, the song says, don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. Because in the end, you're going to what? You're going to win. Amen? Amen. Don't, wait, don't wait till the end to, win, to, to shout. But shout now. In, in the midst of trouble, shout. In the midst of a crisis, shout. Y'all ain't heard me. In the midst of the times of, of Granny going through an open heart surgery, I got to shout. I got to shout. Ooh, I got to shout. He knew beforehand that many followed him for secret purposes. You know, people had their own agenda when they followed Jesus. You do know that, right? Pharisees wanted to challenge him. So people had their own agendas. Amen? He desired to bring the fact home to their own conscience, though. That's what he did. The miracle gave him the opportunity and enabled him to say, without fear or contradiction, you are looking for me. Not because you saw signs, but because you ate. You're full. You're filled of the loaves. That's what John 6 and 26 says. Amen. So you have a reason to do what? Believe. Because he's filled you. He's filled you. Not only physically, but he's filled you with the spirit, right? So in the times when you're feeling hungry, he's filled you. He's, fi he's fulfilled your, your spirit fully. And your appetite is full because Jesus has filled you. Amen. We have to know that. That's why he didn't contradict. Jesus never contradict anything he said or anything that was written about him. Amen. Amen. Right? It was, hear me out. It put all of his followers who profess his name in a position of where they had to examine their thoughts and ask themselves this question. Why do I follow Jesus? That's what it had to, yeah, that's what it, that's what it had to do. That, that's what it should have done for us. That's what it should do for us. When we, do, when we do have that, we shouldn't, but we know who we put our trust and faith in. So this question to us, we should, ask some, we should ask ourselves sometimes because doubt does sometimes creep in. When bills doesn't get paid and the lights get turned off and you don't know what's going to happen next, doubt starts to creep in, right? That bill may not get paid right on time like you may. But right after, you know, you got that cover day. You, what do you have that 12-hour that time, that 12-day lapse of time, right? Right? What, what is it called? The grace period. That's God right there. <laughs> Some of y'all going to catch that on the way home, but that's God. Amen? You got a grace period. Say, somebody should shout right there. Amen? Thanks be to God, we have a grace period. Amen? Yes, 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 yes. And we have to see that. We have to, and, and in this lesson, we have to ask ourselves when we're reading this lesson, because we have to, we should ask ourselves, why do I follow Jesus? If you don't ask that in reading this lesson this morning or when you read it, if you didn't ask yourself that, you should ask yourself that during this moment or after the, 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 the class this morning. Why do I follow Jesus? Because we have our own personal agendas when we're following them. Some of us may, may do it for clout. Some of us may do it for recognition because of powers of position. Some of us may do it because we just want to be a part of something. And we ain't never been accepted in a day in our lives. 
I don't know. Whatever your reason is, it shouldn't be. You should be here to serve and praise Jesus for him and him only. Amen? That's how it should be. Because you trust and, and you have faith in him. Right? Because he's brought you from a mighty long way. So why stop trusting him now? Why stop having faith in him now? So you have a good reason to why you follow Jesus. Tell somebody about the good news of the why you follow Jesus. Maybe they'll, oh, I, I, make, they'll make it a point to make it their own good news to follow Jesus. That's the point of it. It's not to brag on it, but it's just to say, you know what? This is what he's done for me. Amen. Amen. Verse 23 and 27 reads, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves and the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is it a spirit? And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Amen? Amen. What's referred to here as the Galilean crisis had come at last. And the remainder of Jesus' ministry was destined to be the thorny as he suffered the alienation of popular Jewish crowds and heard those who had been praising him soon express disappointment and bitterness against him. Thoughts of the death of John the Baptist and his own day of death approaching on Calvary had left his soul in anguish. That's what it did. Meanwhile, with the second watch of the night came one of those sudden storms, a characteristic of the sea, surrounded by mountains. The wind caused the sea to rise up more and more. That's what it did. In the previous storm encounter, remember a few weeks ago, on the sea by the night, Jesus was with the disciples and saved them. Y'all remember that one? Remember he was in the boat and he had what? Fell asleep. Remember that encounter? All right, y'all with me then. Okay? So we see now, now they were in the midst of the sea, distressed and rowing, making little headway with all their efforts because the wind was against them and Jesus was not there. Nine hours of fearful struggle brought them but little, little over three miles to about the middle of the lake. They're in, the, they're in the midst of the storm, y'all. Amen, amen. In the midst of their crisis. As Jesus met you in the midst of your crisis. Yeah. Let me ask you that this morning. Has he met you in the midst of your crisis? When you was lost at sea. Huh. See, they didn't have no navigation, right? They just set out at sea. Yes, trusting and believing in the Lord that he was going to lead them and guide them across the sea. Amen. But we see here he wasn't in the boat with them. Amen. Now, when, when, when this happened, they didn't attempt to approach the shore, at least in the boat. They, they, were, they were out at sea. They were, they, were, they were stuck. Amen. The storm was a violent one. As the, fir as the first they had experienced at the last, but this one lasted longer. Their strength had been put to a severe test here. Perhaps this storm was a preparation for a greater one to follow. Amen. So be prepared in the midst of your storm. Amen. Amen. You, Jesus is preparing you for another storm. Amen. And don't think it's a bad thing, but that's how we are tested as child, children of God. Amen. Who do we put our faith in in the midst of our storm? Jesus. But he's, he's preparing us for the next storm that's going to come our way. Now, it may not come right after this storm, but it's going to come. And he's preparing you for that next one. So don't think you're just in the midst of a storm right now and you're going through it. Don't look for no pity party, but look to God. Amen. Look to praise him. Look to give him glory yes. in the midst of it all. I know it's hard, but in the midst of it all, look to him. Amen. Amen. It says the trial of faith was, was set at hand right now. Faith. When you lost that seed. They didn't, they, didn't have, they didn't have no coast guards. Amen. No life jackets. The only thing they had was that they were familiar with what? Because they were in the trade of a fisherman. Amen? So some of them knew how to deal with storms at sea, but not this storm. 
Amen? This was a different storm. Amen? This was a storm that was a test for them on their faith. Amen? We have to know it's, our, our storms are just tests to test our faith. Amen? You understand? It's just to test our faith. Amen? According to the scholar, the fourth watch of the night implied that the Roman division of the night into the fourth watch as Mark 13 and 35 describe it, this would be sometime between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. They believe the night had three watches. It was during these hours when the disciples saw Jesus coming towards them, walking on the sea. As he got closer and closer, they didn't recognize the figure to be Jesus and became what? Afraid. In the dim light of the fourth watch of the night, the figure of Jesus was seen as if walking on the water when actually walking through the surface in the shallows of the northern lake. Amen. Some scholars believe this story is Jesus revealed, revealed himself to, to his disciples as a divine being or as God. It is alleged that Jesus' statement to the terrified disciples in Matthew 14 and 27, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid, may reflect what's called what Jesus was saying, I am who I am. <laughs> That's what Jesus was trying to tell them. I am. I, I am who I am. That's what he was trying to get his disciples to realize. Amen. For many, this seems to be read, this, this reading this passage from in Matthew. Furthermore, it's Peter understood the phrase in the normal sense. Lord, if it is you. Those words meant to identify the walker on the sea as Jesus, not God. The figure walking the waves was the Matthew, not a divine being, but the Messiah whom God had endowed with super, supernatural powers. Right. Amen. Matthew's story has the same effect. And when it's considered that this story is placed between two or other miracles stories, Jesus is shown to have a supreme power. In the context of Matthew 14, Jesus was a provider, a ruler of natural, and a healer. That's what Jesus is seen as here in the 14th chapter. Amen? We see here in verse 14, I mean chapter 14, verse 28, And Peter answered to him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was to come down, out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, boisterous, he was afraid and begin, beginning to sink. And he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind, what? Ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the what? Son? The Son of God. Hmm. Peter. Oh, Peter. We know who Peter is, right? Peter's the one that what? Doubted him. Followed him all the way in and then stopped by the fire to chill. Said, I ain't, with him. I ain't going all the way there with him like that. Amen. Peter, oh, Peter. Peter's resolution to come to Jesus required great courage. And although his faith wavered, Christ strengthened him before it was too late. This passage, therefore, overshadowed, overshadowed Peter's denial of Jesus and his restoration after the crucifixion. Matthew thought of Peter as a type of Christian disciple whose teaching could be followed with confidence, Matthew concluded the story with the disciples' response, which is different than Mark's gospel. Matthew agreed with Mark on the theological perspective, but his literally, he, he literally proposed required the, the later faith be over, foreshadowed during the earthly ministry, just as the Gentile did when he went and worshipped Jesus at his birth. Before the Gentile's mission began, in other words. 
So those on the boat worshiped Jesus even though they did not know yet it would be the only shame, full death, and subsequent resurrection that Jesus would enter fully into his lordship. We see here Peter and the other disciples responded to this miraculous happening properly. With their limited understanding, they worshiped. They worshiped him. They said, Jesus is the anointed one of God, worthy of worship, worthy to be praised. Though they did not understand fully, they understood enough to understand they were in the presence of the one, the, the one greater than they had whom God was with. They, they knew they were in the presence of who, had God, who God had sent, the only begotten son. They knew. Sometimes it takes us to be in the midst of a crisis. Sometimes it takes us to be in the midst of trouble, to be reminded who we should have our trust and faith in. Sometimes he has to remind us. He has to remind us. He has to check us. He has to say, you my child. Let me, let me, let me reach out my hand to you and encourage you. See, some of us, we are, we are, we are the Peters. We act like Peter sometimes. We step out on courage. But then we, are, we step with fear as well. He got fearful when he seen the winds. Wind going to come in your life. Storms are going to come. Don't be fearful of them. Don't take your eye off Jesus. I think Peter would have made it to Jesus if he would have kept his eye on him. But for that one split second, he what? Wavered. And our faith wavers sometimes. Amen. Come on. I guess you, you've been saved your whole life. Amen. But our faith wavers sometimes because doubt creeps in. But I come to encourage you this morning. Don't have no doubt in Jesus. Be proud of, of, of serving him. Be uplifted and be encouraged of serving him. Amen. Because you are serving the one and true and only great God. The only, only one. The only true God is one the one we serve. And he, he's trying to remind us this morning. Don't take our eye off of him. Keep our faith on him. Amen. Watch him and let him move. And as he moves, we'll move. Amen. Amen. Let the spirit lead you. That's what the song says, right? Let the spirit lead you all the way what? All the way, huh? all the way, all the way. From earth to what? Heaven. Let the spirit lead you. The only way you can be led by the spirit is you got to trust and have faith in Jesus. Amen. We have to know Jesus had discernment for the, the crisis that was before him. On the other hand, the disciples escaped being part of the wrong cause because Jesus knew the hearts of the people around him. In, the, in time, the apostles also would have discernment. But that would come after the day of Pentecost. When we would find ourselves in crisis, it is easy not to see the Lord's hand in the midst. But in fact, he has ordered our steps regardless of the crisis we find ourselves in. Amen. Amen. Peter walking on the water depicts what it means to be a Christian caught midway between faith and doubt. Peter represents all who dare to believe Jesus is our Savior. Take their first steps in confidence that he is able to sustain them. And then we forget that he keeps us because we don't keep our eye, our eyes on our fixed our, our, the one, our Jesus. We don't keep our eyes on him. The one that sustains us. Instead of on the towering waves that threaten to engulf us. Peter also represents the risk taking of faith. Christians learn to live with uncertainties. The knowledge of faith speaks of realities. And that are of more importance than the things we can see and touch. To believe in the saving power of Jesus is to take a risk. We can worship our Lord even now before our life and troubles will be no more. The gospel songwriter put it this way, and I said it earlier. Don't wait till the battle is over to shout, for we know in the end we are going to win. Don't have doubt in Jesus. Have full faith and trust and believe that we see in this amazing feat. And we see that the, the, the miracle before, how he fed 5,000. Jesus has been that good to us down through the years. So don't let doubt come creeping through that cracked door or creeping through that window. 
But just have full faith in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Have faith in him. Don't have doubt. There's no reason to doubt. Because what he's done for you and me and what he's doing for people around us speaks wonders. Speaks of more miracles and every day. Every day. Amen? That's how good God is. May God bless you and God keep you. Father God, we come before you this morning. Thanking you, Father God, for what you've done, Father God. Father God, we thank you for the students. We thank you for the teachers, Father God. We just thank you for the Sunday school hour, Father God. For it was the Sunday school hour, Father God, where we learned all about you, Father God. We learned all about your miracles and how what you did, Father God, and your ministry on this earth, Father God. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for, for his life. We thank you for, for, for letting him come down, Father God, through 42 generations, Father God. And serve just for you, Father God. And he gave his life. They didn't take it, Father God. And we stopped this morning to say we thank you, Father God. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're about to do, Father God. We bless your name, Father God. We, we, we ask you right now to keep everyone, Father God, in your care like only you can. It's in Jesus' name we pray and say amen. Thank you.